next challenge in the Absolute Beginner series, the 8 Caillou level, is one called even or odd. Create a function that takes an integer as an argument and returns the text even for even numbers or odd for odd numbers. So while the instructions are very easy, there's likely some operators you might not be familiar with. If you do have some experience, go ahead and pause here and try it out. Resume when you're ready. Otherwise, we'll just get right into it. So to determine whether any given number is even or odd, there's a simple check you can do. And I'd, I don't know how to break it down so much. I just know it from math classes. But you can essentially take the dividend or the number passed in, divide it by 2, and then note the remainder of that division. If there is no remainder, you have an even number. If there is a remainder of one, then you have an odd number. And so there's a nice shorthand. We talked about a few of the operators in the last video. There's one extra one I didn't mention there that is called the modulo operator, and it's represented by the um, percent symbol. So you did know that division is the forward slash character, right? And if you do that, it's going to give you a quotient. If we're dealing with integers, it's even going to it's going to truncate the fractional part. So in this case, if I did int num equals 10 divided by 3, it's just going to give me 3. You know that the answer to that is 3 and a third. But because I specified the integer type, it's just going to drop that um, that fractional part. You could use a float, and then it could come out as 3.333 with so many threes in the fractional part, something that fits the floating type range. Same with the double. Um, but in this case, we want the remainder. So there's a really handy operator for that. Feel free to look this up. It's called modulo. And in this case, with 10 divided by 3, or 10 modulo 3, I should say, it's going to perform the same division. And then instead of giving us the quotient, it's going to give us the remainder, which is precisely what we want for an even or odd check. So let's take number. That's what they named the parameter, right? Number modulo 2. And we'll write this out in a little more explicit way. We'll go over a shorthand way of doing it um, afterward. But we're, we're trying to stay really simple here for the absolute beginner level. So we could say if modulo number modulo 2 is equal to 0, there's no remainder. It means it divided evenly with the number 2. Then you're dealing with an even number, right? You could say return. Uh, case matters, remember, so they had a capital E for even. Make sure we match that. Return even. And we know that we have to return a string as well because you can think of method signatures, right? It's sort of like a contract. And we talked about the other parts, but in this case we're looking at the return type and it's saying string. So we have to, we cannot exit this function without returning a string. We have a contractual obligation there. So a way to think of it. Now you could do something like another check. You'll see this is common with beginners. They'll go, if modulo 2 is equal to 1, right, return odd. And this works fine. It's just ugly. It's unnecessary. It's extra typing because there's only two states, right? It's either even or odd. There's nothing else. So really, if you didn't meet this condition, you already know that the result is odd, right? So you don't need to bother with any of this other stuff. You could simply say return odd. Those are the only two possibilities. So I'll go ahead and run the test. Hopefully we get some green. Looks good. Uh, remember to do the test runs the test cases that are visible in your sample test window below. If you hit attempt, it'll run a larger suite of tests that are not visible. And sometimes I have to enter um, console print statements, debugging statements, so I can get an idea of what's going on. But we're clear to submit here, 
and you can go ahead and do that now. Uh, we'll go over one over th one more thing as promised, a sort of um, shorthand way of writing this. Just simplify it a little bit. Let's say return it's mostly the same turn number equals to uh, number modulo 2 equals 0 even else odd and this is called the ternary operator it's like a really condensed form of an if else statement And so basically it takes some statement that evaluates to true or false on um, in the you know that's ended by the question mark here you know it's think of the question mark as sort of asking if whatever preceded it is true or false and then if it's true it gives you the first part uh, they're separated by a colon and if it's false it gives you this part and so we're gonna test that way and again, you get green. A lot of people really like this. Um, I make jokes about one-liner wallies. You know, the people have a tendency, they really like to cram everything onto one line. It works here, it's not ugly. It's very readable. So um, I think it's a good, a better way to do it in this case. But you can imagine as these get more complicated, sometimes people try to cram too much and they go across the screen. I don't recommend that necessarily. So I'll run this again. And it looks good. Um, and see, you know, I'm kind of curious for a minute. In other programming languages, I might be able to get away with this. I'm kind of curious what happens here. Yeah, OK. It can't convert the type. Look at the error from integer to bool. So. Remember, number modulo 2 is giving us an integer remainder value, which is either going to be 0 or 1. And it's saying it won't convert that to a Boolean. But I feel like in C++ and other languages I've used, uh, you can get away with that, where it will sort of um, a 0 value represents false, and any other value that's non-zero is sort of taken as a true. But we don't get that here, and we don't need it. so. I was just curious. Sometimes it's good to play around and um, just see what happens, you know, poke the, the machine and see what happens. You know, you're not gonna break anything, so. Um, otherwise, yeah, I'd, I like this one a little bit better. Feel free to look up the ternary operator if that was confusing or you just want more information. As usual, hit me up with the questions. Make sure you submit your answer and I don't think we'll see a lot of variation in the other responses here but it is a good practice to scroll through and see what other people are doing. You know, you kind of see both of the things we did. So we'll get more variation as we get into more complicated problems. And ranked up, that's always fun, right? Okay, thanks for watching.